welcome everyone come on in how y'all guys doing today welcome in you know swear um uh, oh my god I can't talk today lord jesus help me sharing the bike followers how y'all doing today i'm excited about what god is doing in my life and your guys lives amen how you doing tron moses good to see you man of god awesome man of god how y'all guys doing well, I'm Prophetess Kimberly Hargraves. I'm the founder of Rejoice Central Magazines. And, you know, today we're going to continue our uh, series, The Making of a Prophet. Whew, hallelujah. All right. Sorry, I got my notes all tore up and stuff. How you doing, woman of God? Well, you know, before we get into this teaching, I just want to make a few announcements. You know, today we are having a uh, call. Um, the people that sign up for the School of the Prophets. I want you guys to call in if you need prayer or anything. If you just need to hear the word of the Lord, call in tonight. All right. Access code 605-562-3140. Code 673-436. All right. I will not be speaking, but it will be one of the prophetic students will be speaking. Amen. So please connect. All right. Tonight. It's going, to, it's going to go down. It's going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. I will be going for Friday night so you can connect with me for the prophetic miracle call Friday night. The same code and access uh, number. Okay. And it's going to go down. I'm telling you, miracles will break out on that call. The next thing I want to show you guys, if you have not already, I need you to register for these two things. Register for the prophetic prayer watch. I'm telling you. The glory of God is going to meet us here. Just go to my website. It's free registration. I'm going to have free giveaways to the people that come. Amen. So I'm excited. We need to pray more in the body of Christ. All right. And that's one of my sons to get the body of Christ to pray. All right. Join me Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, on my friend's line, Star Nicole Eloa. On her line, I share my testimony of how God, me, how God brought me from a stripper to a prophetess. Right. So I give God praise. So I just share it all. The good, the bad, the ugly. Amen. So it's at boldandfearlessministries.com. And this is going to be Tuesday, October 25th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. And I share how I used to be a Buddhist, but now I'm a Christian. So I give God praise for that. All right. The next thing I want to, sh uh, you know, share with you guys. If you have not already, you know, register for the Empower, the Empower the New Me Women's Conference. You know, go to my website. Um, it's on my profile, KimberlyHargers.com, and register. You know, um, I'm going to release my brand new book at this conference, and it's only exclusive to this event. I already have lunch, workshops, prophecy, healing, deliverance, you name it all. And it's going to be like a makeup basket giveaway, so I'm excited, you know, about what God is doing on this event. All right? I'm telling you. So, uh, one more thing I want to announce, and I'm going to start having girl talks, too. I need to help y'all women of God out. Amen? All right. So the next thing we're going to go, um, Saturday, tomorrow, my show, Warfare Strategies, is at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's enough announcements for now, but listen, y'all. Okay, are y'all ready for this? Are you ready for this teaching? Um, people have inboxed me, and it's like, woman of God, when are you going to start teaching about the prophets again? So how you doing, Keisha? I miss you, woman of God. God bless you. Yes, I can't wait to hear your your um, praise report. I'm expecting God to move mightily. So, you know, God has been moving um, when i say god has been moving god has been moving Do you hear what i'm saying to you people of god you know you may be discouraged right now but god is moving when i say miracles and signs and wonders are following miracle signs and wonders are following amen so i just give god praise you know i'm telling you how you doing how you doing thank you prophet brian for inviting followers okay so let's get into this teaching please take notes can you take some notes today and then we're going to get into to some prophetic characteristics and then i don't know how holy spirit's going to flow at the end but anyways i'm excited so today we're going to talk about the prophet obadiah you know and a lot of people they get obadiah mixed up with the um obadiah listed in first kings so we're not going to talk about you know that pro we're not going to talk about obadiah today um the one that Hell, I can't even talk today. Lord, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me just slow down. See, I get so excited. I just get tongue-tied, y'all. All right, so we're not going to talk about Obadiah, the one that hid the prophets in the cave. All right? So, and you can find more about him in 1 Kings uh, 18. 1 Kings 18, uh, verses 3 through 18. Okay? So we're going to talk about the prophet in the book of Obadiah. And this one chapter is short and sweet. So, you know, Obadiah... The one that's listed in 1 Kings 18, you know, he was King Ahab's steward. Like, he worked for King Ahab. And he put his life on the line, and he hid, you know, 100 prophets in caves, 50 in each cave, and he fed them bread and water. Why? Because of that Jezebel, you know, she hated the prophets. She, 
wanted to mask it. She she was known for killing the prophets, you know. So, you know, what God is doing, he is literally raising up some Obadiahs right now. Amen. He's raising up some Obadiahs to, you know, hide and help shelter the wounded prophets. Because a lot of prophets on here, you're wounded. You went through something and you're wounded. All right. But we're not going to talk about that Obadiah today. We're going to talk about the Obadiah in the book of Obadiah, right? So Obadiah, you know, it's only one chapter, short and sweet. He is a minor prophet. You know, we need to know about these prophets. Even even if you're not a prophet, you still need to know about it because half of the Bible is talking about prophets, right? So you need to know this, right? You say your brain is already hurting? Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Get some knowledge from the Lord. <laughs> now I'm going to be good today. All right. So Obadiah, the name Obadiah means servant of the Lord. Servant of the Lord. That's, that's a nice name. H how many people on here are servants? God's servants. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. It's powerful to be a servant of God. Amen. I'm telling you, my God, God delights in the prosperity of his servant. That is powerful, right? All right. So, you know, I'm just trying to have fun. I'm trying to make the word of God fun. Amen. Because God is not born. Amen. So that's why I'm a little giddy, you know, because, hey, I'm in the presence of God and, you know, I get joyful. Yeah. So Obadiah means the servant of the Lord. Okay. And I'm just trying to lighten somebody's bad day up. You know, a lot of people heard it on here. The Lord did give me a word, but I'll probably come back later on tonight to release that word. Okay. So, to make a long story short, um, Obadiah, he was called, you know, uh, to another nation. You know, here he was a prophet of Israel, but he had to prophesy to another nation. How you doing, Miss Kelly Rose? God bless you, woman of God. So, Obadiah, what his assignment was, is to prophesy against the nation of Edom. So a lot of people feel like prophets only speak good things, but sometimes prophets judge and they rebuke. All right. So we see in Obadiah, in the book of Obadiah, he had to rebuke the nation of Edom. Let me tell you why. Right. Let me tell you why. Okay. So if you go back, you know, uh, Isaac, you know, Isaac, he married what? Rebecca. He had two sons, Jacob and Esau. All right. So Jacob and Esau were brothers, you know, so Edom, the, 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 the nation of Edom was descendants of Esau. So let me tell you what happened. So what happened was Nebuchadnezzar, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he took over uh, the Judah. He took over Judah. And instead of the Edomites helping their brother out because they were related, you know, Jacob and Esau, you know, they performed a treacherous deed. What does treachery mean? Betrayal, a violation of trust. So God saw that thing. God saw it. And he said, okay, since you did this, judgment is going to come upon you. All right? So this is what Obadiah he was called to do. He was called to do. Amen. I still feel the fire of God. Jesus, all in my head. Oh, my God. All right. So, y'all, sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit silly today, y'all. Forgive me, okay? So, to make a long story short, it... it, it Nebuchadnezzar took over Edom, excuse me, he took over the, the Judea in uh, 586 BC. 586 BC. Welcome, first timer. Welcome, first timer. Yes, I teach about the prophetics every week. All right. So I'm just having fun today. So let me tell you the significance of this. So when um, Babylonian, the Babylonians, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylonian, Bab Babylonia, however you want to say that thing or whatever like that. So, um, you know, they, they crushed Judah. They crushed the Solomon's temple. They destroyed the Solomon's temple to the point where they lost their independence as a nation. So th this, this is what the people of Edom did. While their brother was down, while their brother was down, they pretty much kicked the brother in the head. They, they kicked, you know, the Judeans in the head and they killed some of their refugees, you know. So God was like, no, I'm not pleased with that. So he raised up a prophet, Obadiah you know, to speak thus said the Lord. So we don't know much about Obadiah. Only thing I know is that, hey, his name means servant of the Lord. So I want to encourage you prophets on here. Maybe God is raising you up. Maybe you're the only prophet in your family. You know, God can still use you powerfully. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Yep, the same thing people do today. Yep, you know, I'm telling you, God don't like that. You know, God doesn't like, you know, when somebody's weak and discouraged and you come and just take a knife and just stab them even more. God ain't pleased with that. No, when your brother's down and weak and discouraged, 
and wants us to help restore them back, amen, and build them up and speak life into them. And that's what Edom should have did instead of tearing up their brothers and killing them and making things worse. All right, so let me tell you about the Edomites. These people were prideful. All right, let me give you some more. Let me, where's my Bible? I should have my Bible right here. Uh, I got it, y'all. All right, so in verse number one, in verse number one, if you turn to Obadiah, you know, we see how the Lord gave Obadiah a vision. Prophet C. Prophet C, right? So um, some people, some prophets have a, a stronger grace to hear. Some prophets have a stronger grace to see. So, yes, pray for me per minute, ministry. You got it, woman of God. I'm going to go back and watch the replay. All right. So prophet C. So um, Obadiah in verse number one, Obadiah one is only one chapter, but the first verse, he had a vision. And, you know, this was the vision of Obadiah. All right. Um, also, um, we see that in verse number three, if you turn on the Obadiah verse number three, they had, um, the, the Edomites lived in mountains. They lived in the cleft of the rocks. They said those were like high mountains. And if you look up the geographical location of Edom, you see, it's really, really high in the mountains. So these people were prideful. There's like, God can't touch me. God can't do this to me. But then God, you know what God did because of their pride? Well, what is the word of God says? You know, pride, um, well, let me see. Pride comes before destruction, right? Pride comes before destruction. So the Lord allowed the A Arab neighbors, their Arab neighbors to overtake their land and territory. All right. Because they felt like uh, they were untouchable. But God says, nah. All right. So Obadiah prophesied the Edomites judgment and their downfall. All right, yes, he is definitely shifting his prophecy. Yeah, God is doing some new things, changing up the guards. I'm telling you, new faces, new prophet arising. Amen. You know, God's calling the, the, the wounded prophets out the cave and come forth and speak. You know, God is literally healing hearts and, you know, other people. And I have a word, but I don't want to get into that word right now. You know, I'm going to probably come back later and release the word that the Lord gave me. It's, it's going to be so encouraging to you guys. All right. Yes, we have a lot to work to do. Yes, we have a lot of work to do. Kiana's on here, woman of God. Yeah, that's a, I love that woman of God. But listen, all right. So um, he saw, he had a vision, y'all. You know, we saw that in verse number one. All right, in verse number three, we, we see um, how prideful they were, the Edomites. All right, so verse number 18, if you skim to that, we see how um, he prophesied judgment on them. He prophesied judgment on them. So that's pretty much Obadiah. That's pretty much the book. All right. So what I got out of the book of Obadiah was, hey, you know, that, you know, God does not stand for treachery. You know, you will be judged. Like, seriously, you know, if that is your brother or if that's your sister in Christ, if they're down and weak, come on now. And you do something crazy to them. You know, I'm telling you, God is not pleased with that. So same thing for, for that, like Jacob and Esau were brothers, all right? And um, I guess Jacob, his descendants were the Judeans, and Esau's descendants were, descendants were the Edomites. So the Edomites and the Judeans should have been allies, right? Should have been buddies and friends. But when one of them fell, the other one just pretty much made it worse, made it worse damage, and God wasn't pleased with that, all right? So... Hey, we know that God is sovereign. God is sovereign. Amen. So this is what I got out of the book of Obadiah. All right. So um, one more thing before we uh, shift and I talk about some prophetic. No, they had the same mother. They had the same mother. Uh, Rebecca was the mother. Uh, if you do the gene genealogy, it was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Jacob was the son. Jacob and Esau were brothers and they were the son of Rebecca and Isaac. All right. Um, yes, they were twins. Yes, yes, yes. But see, Esau, he sold his birthright to, um, for like a bowl of pottage or soup or something like that. You know, but actually Jacob tricked him. Rebecca, his mama helped trick, uh, Esau. All right. So make a long story short. Um, let me see anything else I want to talk about that. All right. The prophet Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, he also prophesied against Edom. All right, and we can find more about that in Ezekiel 25, Ezekiel 25, verses 12 to 14. All right, so I, I talk about these prophets. Let me tell you why I talk about these prophets. 
Because we, if you're if you're called to the prophetic office, especially, you need to know who you are. You know, you need to find a prophet in the word of God where you can identify yourself with. And, you know, because I'm telling you, prophets, we go through a lot of things. And, you know, when I first got caught into this thing, I was having a lot of visions. And nobody could tell me what was wrong with me. You know, nobody could tell me what was going on. And I thought I was crazy. I'm like, oh my God, I told the first lady at the church at the time, she looking at me like, like I was crazy. I told the people who I thought were my friends at the time, and they, they thought I was crazy. You know, um, if you say Jesus came in my room, a lot of people in their carnal mind, they wouldn't be, they'd, they'd be like, huh? If you say God speaks to me, I hear from God, they probably try to put you in a loony bin, you know, the people in the world. But we know that the, the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. So, you know, all this stuff was happening to me. I was hearing God in my head, and I was having visitations from Jesus, and I was seeing visions not only about my life, but other people's lives. And I was like, whoa, hold up, hold up, hold up. So I had to, you know, study the word and study myself, approve unto God, amen? I had to really get in the word. Because when he first called me to this thing, I'm just thinking like, hey, there are no women prophets, but I had to really get in the word, and I found out, hey, there, are, there were women prophets in the word of God, you know? Prophet is Hauda, you know, Prophet is Noah Diet, even though she was a false prophet, and you sh you can find about her in uh the book of Nehemiah. Um, Prophet is Anna. You know, we talked about Prophet is Anna on here. Her her job was to pray and intercede and fast in the temple to help birth out the next prophetic movement, you know, of the Messiah being born, Jesus Christ. Um, Prophet is Deborah. You find about her. I think Judges book four, Judges number four, we find about her how God raised her up as a leader. So I had to get into the word of God. I had to really get into this thing. All right. So that's why, you know, it's important to, you know, learn about these prophets. And plus most of the Bible, especially the old Testament is mostly prophets. All right. Moses, Abraham, come on now. Prophets, right? Jesus Christ was a prophet. All right. There's so many prophets in this word. All right. So let's, I want to encourage you guys. So, um, I, I, I want to call Enoch a prophet. It's not, not much is not known about him, but I know he walked with God. And I know, like, I did read uh, the book of Enoch, um, one of those forbidden books. I did read that book. Amen. And that book helped me out so much because I was seeing, like, uh, angelic stuff in the realm of the spirit. And I know he had a lot of angelic um, encounters and stuff like that. All right. How you doing? How you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. Yes. Yes, it was a great book. All right. So, you know, so let's get into this thing. Are y'all ready for some prophetic characteristics? All right. So prophets, we are really super sensitive to the presence of God. You know, we're able to discern if something is of God and if it's flesh, you know, so we're, we're really, really sensitive to, to God's presence. Amen. All right. So, you know, so it's a verse in the Bible, you know, first Samuel four and 21 first samuel 4 and 21 you know and it talks about the ichabog the ichabog and what does ichabog mean somebody put that up there i c h a um b o d ichabog you know that means no glory the glory of the lord has departed and you know we see a lot of churches like that you know um where there's no presence you know like prophets are really super sensitive to that and they can just feel like oh god ain't up in this place you know for example like if i get on somebody's scope or if i get on somebody's prayer line i don't feel god i'm getting off of there you know i always been like that you know because i i need to be around the glory of god i need to have someone that's anointed you know to to be around that anointing and man I, I'm, I'm like that i'm sorry if i don't feel god on you you know i'm sorry i'm, I'm gone you know like i'm sorry i'm getting off this line amen all right so prophets are super sensitive to, you know, the glory of God, this presence, amen? And a lot of prophets, you carry the presence of the Lord. You are called to create that atmosphere. Why do you think prophet, when another person get around you, they begin to prophesy? We see that in, in the book of the, uh, you know, we see that in like 1 Samuel 10, you know, like Saul, he wasn't a prophet. His men, his, his men, his messengers, they weren't prophets, when he sent them after King David to try to kill him or whatever to find David. So when they got in uh, the presence of Samuel and his company of prophets, they began to prophesy because, you know, they carry the presence of the Lord. They carry that prophetic, you know, spirit on them. 
Amen. So prophets, you know, you carry the God's presence. Amen. And also you're called to create the prophetic atmosphere. So you really know, you know, if God is here, you know, if God ain't here. And I, I know God right now. Oh God, I, I can be praising God for your presence. Amen. So, so, you know, you, you just, you just know this thing. You're able to discern like, mm -mm, God ain't in here. Let me, let me get off. My, let me buy. Let me get off this scope. Let me get off this prayer line. All right. All right. So um that that's a scriptural reference yes i'm telling you, we need god's glory see it's it's powerful let me tell you about god's glory miracles happen in god's glory riches happen in god's glory in god's glory it's his manifest it's his manifest presence you know i'm telling you yes you feel so strong right now i feel god too so strong i'm telling you my god when i'm when I'm, I'm talking about the glory so but we talk about it god has to demonstrate it right hallelujah so let me tell you about the presence and the glory of god in the glory things are accelerated riches are in the glory finances that you need are in the glory healing that you needed is in that glory deliverance that you need is in that glory amen demons manifest in the glory of god demons run and they flee in in the presence of, of god amen those things that are hidden those demonic things the lord will shine the light and expose that darkness in the glory amen that's powerful that is powerful so yeah that's just, just the glory of god so we need the glory of god amen we see so many times people prophesying out they flesh no presence i'm sorry i'd rather have the presence of god amen because let me tell you why i'd rather have the presence of god because god told me he says daughter as long as you abide in my presence none of your words will fall and hit the ground i was like oh praise god so i began to see some things and, you know, even it's, it, just as a prophet, some things that come out of my mouth, I'm like, but it's not me. It's the God speaking. And then whatever I spoke out of my mouth would come to pass. I'm like, wow. So that's why it's important, people of God, to walk uprightly and, and not grieve the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. To walk uprightly and not grieve the Holy Spirit. All right. Prophets, you hate when the Holy Spirit is grieved. We hate that. Amen. We get grieved. We get vexed. When, when the Holy Spirit is vexed, because we know that the Lord will allow us to feel what he feels, right? Yes, I'm telling you, like, have you ever, who on here, feel, God let you feel his, his, his burden for souls? Wow, God, you know, you're up here crying and weeping over the church and snotting and just like, man, God, you let me feel that or you feel that righteous indignation you're like jesus in the temple he flipped over the money tables and he's like this is my father's house it should be a house of prayer but you're trying to turn it into a, a den of thieves like come on now like we're so sensitive and we, we feel what god feels and we care about what he cares it's like we have god's heart you know I'm like god what's on your heart today lord god what do i need to pray for god god what concerns you god today who be asking god that in their prayer closet i know i do when i go in my, my when i go in my face like god you know, like, I don't want to just come to you and be like, give me, give me, give me. No, God, what do you want me to do? Like, what do I need to do? Amen. And most of the things have been, most of the things have been like commands. Like, okay, I need you to do this. I'm like, oh, okay, God. But listen, you know, prophets, you know, and I'm not counting anybody out. You know, I, you know, even if you have to give a prophecy, all ministers, amen. You know, I just teach about the prophets. But yes, yeah, use me. That's right. You got to have a hunger. And I decree and declare in your life that God is going to use you and fill you up in Jesus' name. All right. So, okay. So, we don't like when the Holy Spirit is grieved. We know that the Word of God tells us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. The reason why I don't like timelines, not timelines, but time restraints, because it really quenches the Holy Ghost. You know, miracles, the best miracles happen at the end of the service. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Miracles, like break up at the, break out at the end. That's why I don't believe quenching the Holy Spirit, like cutting them off, cutting them off, trying to put them on your time regimen or your, your schedule or your, your program for your ministry. The, the, I'm telling you, the best miracles, especially in this the ministry, I have a healing and deliverance ministry. I'm telling you, just tearing and just being in God's presence and miracles breaking out and backs aligning and people demons getting cast out and i'm just like god i give you praise god just all kind of things is happening in the in the glory of god like wow god do it god jesus all right so that's what's, that's why it's important to 
not quench the Holy Ghost. Amen. Prophets hate when Holy Spirit is quenched. They 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 want to move a God. They want something new. Amen. How many people get vexed? You go into a service and it's the same thing over and over. You just know it. Oh my God, they're gonna sing this song today. Oh my God, like they're gonna sing the same song every Sunday. Ah, oh, you know how many people get vexed like that? I, I know I do. I, I can't. I just can't do it. You know I want to hear something new. Something exciting. You know, God's not boring. God is exciting. I love going to church and I love hearing a new sound. I just love putting my hands up and feeling God all over me. Woo, that feels so good. That feels good, right? All right. So, yes. Yes, I'm telling Yep. So, prophets like new stuff, right? They, they, they like the new move of God that God is doing in the earth. God uses prophets to pray and intercede and, you know, the usher in the next move of his glory, the next revival, the, the next harvest of souls. And, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's powerful. Amen? And so, prophets, you're really sensitive to God's presence. You don't like when he, he's vexed. You don't like when people grieve him, you know? So you're really sensitive, a true prophet of God. You're not going to put everything in the vessel. I'm sorry. You're not going to put everything in the, the temple of God. Amen? Because we know that the word of God tells us to glorify God with our bodies. So we're not going to be watching all types of stuff. We're not going to be listening to all kinds of things. Because you're like, nope, I'm not going to put this garbage in me because I, I I need a pure flow. I need a pure prophetic flow. I'm not going to vex the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to grieve the Holy Spirit. All right? So they, they don't watch everything, you know, because they're like, okay, I care about my relationship too much with the Holy Spirit. I, I need him. You know, just like King David said, God, don't take your presence away from me. Don't do it, God. You know, God, you know, I'm sorry, God, I repent. Just don't take your presence away from me, right? Amen. All right. So the next thing I want to tell you guys, prophets, true prophet of God. I'm going to say true prophet of God. Amen. We have higher standards. Amen. You know, we know the standard is holiness, you know, because the word of God tells us to be holy. Just as God is holy, everything about us should be holy. Our conduct should be holy, right? That the things that we, that our lifestyle should be holy, you know, we need to be holy, you know, I'm telling you, we need to practice holiness. We need to practice righteousness. So true prophet of God, we have high standards. That's why fa fasting and praying, we got to live a fasted lifestyle. When was the last time you fasted? prophet and you wonder why you can't hear as much as you should be hearing you know i'm you know i'm just saying all right so yes and right standing with god that's my book that's my book Miss, mr robert all right so um we prophets have a higher standard you know um we should have high standards if you're if you're, especially if you're called to the office of a prophetic uh you know ministry you need to have a higher standard live it live it out because you know some people may not never read their bible you know but they're looking at you, you know, so you're somebody's Bible. You are somebody's Bible. So they're looking at how you're going to act, how you're going to respond when something happens. Amen. So you need to have a higher standard. You shouldn't be flying off the hook and handle when something, you know what I'm saying? Because the enemy will use anyone, you know, I'm telling you. All right. So you should have higher, high, high standards. All right. And. You know, we, we find this a lot. And I'm going to talk about prophetic pitfalls. Can I talk about some prophetic pitfalls right quick? You know, I feel, I mentioned this last night in the teaching of School of the Prophets, and it just kind of scared me. You know, some of the pitfalls as prophets not to get into. All right. So, we find this a lot. You know, that old critical, judgmental spirit. Oh, you know, who am I talking to today? You know, that is a prophetic pitfall. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Why? Okay, because you forgot where you come from. Number one, you forget where you come from. You used to be the biggest alcoholic, the biggest fornicator, the biggest whoremonger, and then you're going to forget where you come from, and then you're going to try to be judgmental. Come on, somebody. You know, so you have to be careful to not fall into that critical spirit. If you allow that critical spirit to get inside of your heart, then it's going to have you operating from the wrong place. And you don't ever want to prophesy out of the wrong kind of spirit. You hear what I'm saying to you? We need to prophesy out of love. You know, love makes the, the gifts work. You don't understand what? The prophetic pitfalls? You know, let me tell you something. The word of God says God is love. And the word of God says, oh, you will know these as my disciples because they love one another. You know, they say God is love and he that loves dwelleth in God and God dwells in him. Amen. I think that's First John something. Is it 4 or something? I don't know. But listen, you know, we don't need to, you know, uh, this thing freezing. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. 
we, we need to operate from a place of love. Amen. All right. Because we know there's many people out here that are hurting. Many people out here depressed. Many people feel like giving up. You know, I, I've been in that place. I've been broken. And I thank God that God sent me a prophet to speak into my life. You know, to keep me holding on because I wanted to give up. I was praying to die. I said, God, I, I don't want to live no more. You know, that's how bad it was for me in, in my situation. All right. So, you know, I prayed to God and, you know, he gave me the prophetic word and I, I, I held on. All right. So imagine if the wrong kind of prophet came in my life, had a critical spirit and spoke a harsh word to me. That probably would have made me check up out of here. I'm just being real. Like, oh, so that's why it's important, prophet, to don't fall into that pit. That pitfall, that destruction, that, you know, the, the wrong path of just having a harsh and critical spirit. We, we don't want to do that. You know, we don't want to do that. All right. You know, all right. So um, we see a lot in the body of Christ, a lot of religious people. That's that religious spirit. Oh, I can't stand that religious spirit. They want to be judgmental. They forget, like I said before, where they come from. They forget they used to be a crackhead back in the day. They, for, they forget they used to sell drugs. They used to be the biggest thief. You know, and then they want to judge somebody else. No, we need to love on them. You know, we give them the word of God and pray. You know, I'm telling you, sometimes you just, the only thing you could do is just plant seeds. Plant seeds and keep it moving. All right? And just be a good example. Be a good example. Right? But it's the Holy Spirit. It's the power of God that can bring correction to, to, to bring change. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? For example, you know, I used to be the woman, you know, I'm going to be honest. Can I be honest with you guys? When I first got saved, you know, cause I used to be a stripper before I got saved. So I was going to church with my stripper clothes still, some of my stripper clothes, you know, but it took God, it took the power of God, the Holy Spirit to convict me to make me cover up and, you know, dress modest like a woman of God. But you see, I didn't know any better, but you know, you know, and then it took like the church mothers to, you know, like, honey, baby girl, you know, and get a sheet out, you know, the sheet, the church sheets, you know, and cover me up, you know, to, to, to mother me in, in the church. I, I didn't know anything, but if you come in there with a, a harsh, critical spirit and not love on them and show them the right way, then, you know, you can run the people off. All right. I'm telling you. All right. Yeah. That word, I'm telling you that word be cutting that word cuts. That's right. That word's cuts. All right. So, yeah, and it's a religious demon on here right now. So, yeah, we're we just going to keep it moving. Yes. So, if the trolls bother you, just ignore and block. All right? So, yeah, we had the same testimony. Yeah, well, see, I give God praise. That's why I want to do this women empower me thing because I'm telling you, God has given me 50 things to empower the women of God. So, I'm excited about that. All right. All right. So, prophets on here. You're, you're going to face rejection. Oh, my God. How many people on here have been rejected? I've been rejected, beyond rejected, beyond rejected. Prophets, you get rejected, right? And it's just part, I think this is part of the mantle, part of the call to get rejected. Why do you get rejected? Because, listen, you know, the truth hurts. Nobody wants to hear the truth. You know, people want to stay in their sinful lifestyle and just have fun because sin is fun. You know, it's like a credit card. I know you heard this before. It's like a credit card. You have fun now, but you pay later. You know, we know that. The price is death. Sin equals death. Or to be carnally minded is death, but sin equals death. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? You know, it's eternal death. It's an eternity in hell if you don't repent. So, why is this thing freezing? All right, but listen. You know, prophets, you get rejected because you speak truth. And and when, it, and when that anointing comes upon you, you get bold and confrontational, you know? And you just be like, but it's not you. It's the Holy Spirit within you preaching against sin. You know what I'm saying? Because true prophets of God, you preach against idolatry. You know, pe people got idols in their heart or, you know, just things like that before God. And God wants to put um, the people, his people back on the right track. A true prophet of God, their job is to point and to guide the people back in the right direction, right? So, you know, of course, it comes with a mental rejection. Nobody wants to hear, holiness is right when they in sin having fun. Nobody wants to hear that, right? So, of course, you won't get rejected. You know, um... Um, you get rejected because, um, I just, it's just a lot. Let me see. My computer's about to die. No. Hold on. Yeah. Let me, let me plug this up. Yes. All right. It, but it comes with the mantle and it keeps us on our, it keeps us on our face, you know, before the Lord, you know, I'm telling you, Jesus was rejected. So he understands he was the chief cornerstone who the builders rejected. So he understands, right? The rejection, it don't feel good. So prophet uh the next prophetic 
pitfall I want to talk to you guys is don't take the bait of staying in rejection too long. Don't take the bait of, of um, staying in rejection too long. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Like, because when you get rejected and you feel some kind of way, depression starts coming in, you know, the spirit of suicide comes in, you know, and it's really debilitating. You know, and you cannot do your God-given assignment because you're in this place of uh, just, oh, my God. You remember Elijah, you know, the prophet? He just prayed down fire from heaven. And then, you know, I think Jezebel heard of it. And, you know, she, she threatened his life. And then he ran. And he got discouraged. And he was praying to die. You know, so we have to be careful. We have to really, really, really be careful not to fall into that, that, that stupor, like that slump of like, oh, you know. No, we, we got to get up out of that thing, all right? So we have to really, as prophets, we have to die to self. Like, you know, and this helped me with rejection. I'm like, God, I, 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 how much rejection can somebody take? But then I had to die to self. I had to really die to self, and I had to realize, hey, they're not rejecting Kim. They're rejecting the, the Christ that's in me. So I'm just the vessel. We're just vessels. We're just mouthpieces, all right? So... That rejection, you know, I used to cry and get all hurt and just go back in my cave and just didn't want to come out, you know, for a few days. I was just really wounded because of the rejection. But then when I got that revelation, like, okay, it's, 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 it's not about me. You know, it's about Christ. I'm just a mouthpiece. And I just kept it moving. Like, shake off the dust. You know, not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to receive you. You know, prophets are without honor in their own country. That means, like, everybody else see you as this great man and woman of God, but your own family looking at, like... Ooh, that's just mom. That's just dad. They ain't nobody, you know. Um, you know, uh, for example, you know, maybe maybe at your church you're not getting, you know, the kind of respect. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, that's that's just sister so and so. But you gotta just brush it off. All right, brush it off. It's, it's not about you. It's not about you. Amen. All right. So prophets, don't take the bait of staying in rejection too long. All right, shake it off. Shake it off. It's not about you. It's about Christ. All right. That's why we're supposed to take up our cross daily and follow after Jesus Christ. Amen. This walk is lonely sometimes. All right. How many prophets on here have been lonely? You know, you, you've been lonely. Amen. I'm reading from experience, boo. Life experience. I have to live this thing out. Everything I minister, I live this thing out. I can tell you about rejection. I can tell you my, my whole family turned on me. The whole church turned on me one time. I, I know all about rejection. I have to live this thing out. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? The people who I thought were my friends, they end up walking out of my life. All right. So this is experience. All right. So, so, make a long story short, prophets on here, oh Jesus, don't don't take the bait of that, all right? Just just give it to God and say, okay, God, I, I give you the pain. Some people need, need to release right now. Some people need to release right now, amen? Because somebody just walked out your life and it hurt you to the very core. You need to release it and say, God, I just cast my cares right now and just give it unto him. Give it unto him. And, and, and don't. Don't hold it in. Is it? This thing is freezing. Should I stick going? It's freezing. 